having you here. When you have too much goat milk, the best thing to do is to make goat yogurt and goat butter. And I have more butter than I can possibly eat and thought it's time to make some more of my buttery bunnies. <laughs> and this one is sort of a multi-phase so meaning it started out as one thing and then became another. But let's start at the beginning. So first of all, I decided to make a lavender infused butter. I wanted not just the fragrance, much of which does fade through the saponification. And same with the color. You do get a little bit of color, but that too fades a bit in the soap. So that's why this is going to be sort of a multi-phase soap. But I just love herbal infusions. Now this is dried lavender from last year, but it still is highly fragrant and just seemed like the perfect foil for spring. Just sort of a awakening to the delicious florals that are all around us this time of the year. And where I am right now, it's mostly wildflowers. I don't have a lot of propagated flowers other than herbs. Now I do grow things like calendula, uh, fever few, a lot of things that bloom. But just flowers for flowers sake, I don't plant very many of those. Sometimes I'll throw out some zinnias, something along that line for the bees and moths and things like that. But as far as lavender goes, that is grown strictly at least in my opinion, as a medicinal. Be but not uh, in the traditional sense. It's more of a herb to help you be calm and relaxed. It's out there who claim that it helps with sleep, uh, menopausal issues, and several other things. So hey, I think it's a good ingredient to experiment with and use in any way that you can. So after I infuse this for about six hours in the goat butter, I am then put it in a nut milk bag and I'm going to strain the butter out of it. And this I do very hands-on for several different reasons. First of all, I love the benefits of the goat milk butter on my hands. I'm serious. It is almost as beneficial to drying and cracking and all those things as any lotion that you can purchase. So I'm a big fan of it. And with the lavender in it, this felt great wringing this out into this bowl. <laughs> so here I'm just combining my lavender butter into my oils and butters here, which is the usual suspects, olive oil, coconut oil, uh, shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, and castor oil. And this is goat milk and aloe vera. It's not pure goat milk this time. I 
wanted to blend it because I wanted to keep this rather thin and so I just cut the goat milk with the aloe vera gel and this also is sea salt as well as coconut sugar and I will be adding uh, lavender essential oil as well but I can tell you even before adding it this just smells so lavendery <laughs> but I know that that will fade quite a bit so that's why I'm adding the lavender essential oil and I, I will tell you I have made thousands of bars of soap in my life and lavender is still the most popular and it personally it's one of my favorites too uh, just behind rosemary I do prefer rosemary myself to lavender but I enjoy them both okay so initially I thought what I'm going to do is add a little bit of titanium dioxide to get a lighter color and what I didn't show on film here is that I added two tablespoons of uh, purple clay to that base to try to emulate that lavender color. It looks a little brown here because it's wet, but when it dries, it does have a much lighter lavender color. And I'm just doing this as an in-the-pot swirl because I wanted to get some variation in these. Now, here's what I'm going to say about this is while I was pouring these, I thought it was just beautiful and I was so excited about how these were going to turn out. And while I wasn't disappointed, it was much lighter than I had anticipated. The I didn't add enough of the purple clay, which I'm known to sometimes underestimate, but I'd always rather underestimate than overestimate. But in this case, I thought about, well, how can I save this? Because, well, you'll see here in just a moment as I pull these out of the mold, uh, how faint these colors really were. And one of the great things I think about this industry is that we can improve upon anything, right? But as you can see, they do have that very nice, very light lavender color. But you can hardly see any variation between the purple clay and the part I added the titanium dioxide to it kind of all just muddied together and they're just one color and that was a little disappointing uh, not that they're not a great soap and didn't look good but this isn't what I wanted so I thought well how can I improve this see those swirls are just almost impossible to see and I just wanted it to be a little more obvious so I made up another batch of soap and thought you know what I'm going to create a dip <laughs> and just see if I can't get a better color now for this, I decided to use Alkanet root because I know that I can get a much deeper color than I can with the purple clay. And this is a fusion that is a good year old, so it's got a really good, good deep color to it. And that's what I decided I wanted to color this with. And 
One of the great things about using natural colorants, no matter what you're using, whether you're using matter root or alkanet or annatto seed or any of the hundreds of other ingredients, they allow us to use a lot more than you can with, let's say you're using micas. Well, if you use an overage of micas, uh, you can cause staining or other problems. Matter of fact, I was talking to someone recently who bought some soaps from someone that had a lot of glitter and mica, beautiful, beautiful soap. But she said every time she showered that it leaves mica and glitter stains on her shower curtain and her shower mat, and she has to wash and wash and wash those. That can happen with natural colors too, but it's not as prone to because we generally don't overuse it. Now, certain things like turmeric, if you use way too much turmeric, that can be staining. The same can be said of activated charcoal and, and other things. But one of the great things about alkanet root is I've not found that to be the case. I've used heavy amounts and lighter amounts. And this is not a heavy amount here. It was just enough. And I've never had that problem with staining. But this is just some oasis that my mother left me. <laughs> uh, she used to do arrangements, floral arrangements, and she had tons of this stuff. And it was in a closet. So I just brought it out, soaked it in water, took these uh, skewers, wooden skewers, and just poked it into the underside of the bunnies and dipped them in the alkanet swirl soap here, like so, and just gave them a swirl to get this pattern. Now, this isn't perfect, but I've seen other people do glazes over soap where they put it on a wire rack and then pour it over it and while that looks really cool i didn't want those quote unquote grill marks on the bottom of the soaps so i thought why not skewer them and dip them and that avoided that problem the one thing that i would do differently is i would shake these off more so that there aren't drips because some of these have little drips off the nose or the tail and it's easy to fix afterwards but why create more work for yourself so I would spend more time spinning it over the bowl to avoid the drips just like with painting drips are the enemy of a good paint job right but this did give me more of what I was looking for. So for that, I was very happy. And I'll do this again. I really like this idea. And I was actually thinking, wouldn't it be fun to do something like a jawbreaker? Now, you may not know what I mean, but when I was a kid, they had these candies that were called jawbreakers. They were a very hard candy, but they were layered in different colors. So like the top layer may be red, and as you suck on it, then you get a blue, and then below that maybe a white, and so on and so on. And as a kid, that was part of the fun, right? Of course, breaking your teeth on <laughs> those things was always a risk, too, because I couldn't help but bite them. And when you're a kid, it seems you're invincible, right? But I just love jawbreakers. That was one of my favorites. Anyway, but I was thinking maybe you could do something along those lines with the soap, right? So I've got some ideas, so stay tuned for some jawbreaker soap, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an idea. Uh, the only problem is that you, it can be a little wasteful. So you have to make sure that you're using everything. So even with what's left over of this after the dipping, 
I use that to pour in some round soap molds so that none of it would go to waste. And I use those like in my grab bags. And just try not to waste. Always try to make sure that you're using uh, as much as you can because goodness there's enough waste in our world isn't there so I should have pulled the camera back a little more I realize that now and I was trying to be so careful with this I didn't look at the camera as much as I should have and didn't realize now I'm gonna give you some more a uh, tip here these skewers were very thin and they're bamboo skewers and they were very flexible so actually overnight a few of these bent all the way over and touched each other and and some touched the table and so they have some marks on them and that those I'm going to just like I said grow in grab bags uh, that's one of the great thing about this is again avoiding waste and grab bags are a wonderful way to get rid of your overpours or dented soaps, things like that. Uh, I don't make promises on the grab bags. I say things like there's no, these could have any essential oil in them. They use different colorants and it's a complete mystery on what you'll get. I don't label them. And that's why they're discounted quite a bit. I think those I'm selling for like 12 bucks. And they get five different soaps of some type. And so this would be one of those. If one of these is damaged, that would go into that grab bag. So they're imperfect, but still great soaps. And it's just one way to make sure that you're utilizing everything. So after they dried, Here's what, how they look. And as you can see, the swirls are much more pronounced. I really liked kind of that marble Delft look. Uh, yeah, I just was very pleased. Some more than others. You know, some are more faint, some are more pronounced. But overall, I was very pleased with the colors. What do you think? And I have plans coming up in the very near future for, well, I'm not going to say. I have made a habit of mentioning things I'm going to do and then things happen and I don't ever get around to it. So I should just do them and keep my mouth shut, right? <laughs> because I know what it's like to plan on something. Okay, so like the shampoo, I did a community post with a picture of me with my goat milk shampoo and then I never did a video and never put them in my shop. The reason for that, well let me explain, it was an issue with bottles. Okay, so before I put anything in the shop I have to test uh, products, whether it be the bottles that I use, the type of labels that I'm going to be using, um, and plan all this out in advance and the first bottles that I got were too small let me explain that a bit it was because I clicked on the wrong item and got the wrong bottles so I had to order new bottles well then I the pumps didn't work properly this has been an issue with certain companies out there and I don't know if any of you have encountered that. And there is a fix to a lot of pump problems. And I don't like for customers to have to do this, but oftentimes if the pump won't come up, if you unscrew the pump and then wipe off the base of the pump and then grab it with something like your hand or a paper towel and get a good grip on it, then turn the top, the pop-up will generally, well, pop up. But enough of that, but I am going to get those in the shop soon. I'll try to get a video put together as well. But I just want to thank you all so much for continuing to visit the channel. I appreciate you more than I can say. Hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun. Goodbye.